Okay, so now that the tables are normal, like this. <laughs> Rachel, look over here. Okay. Rachel, look over here. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to our city council meeting for August 27th. Uh, if we could have a roll call, please, ma'am, to establish quorum. Vicki Schneider. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. Melissa Green. Here. Tom Buford. Here. Christy Kendrick. Here. Terry McClung. I am here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, I have a couple of items, if it's okay with the council, I'd like to rearrange. Uh, because of uh, people who are here. Uh, I'd like to move uh, item under uh, the, let's see, the first one would be new business one. No, the. Uh, yes, one, then four. One and four, four. Move item number four under item number one. Discussion of panhandling downtown. Okay. Uh, so Thomas, Chief uh, Acord is here. And so in case there's any questions about what's going on with enforcement, you can address that. And also move unfinished business <coughs> a suggestion on the suggestions for amending code section on dogs, uh, item number three, and move that up to the next item of business. Um, our animal control officer is here also and keep him from having to stay to the very end. Do so you mean under, under moving up, up under new business as the second? As second yeah. or the first? Third. 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 So that it would be new business one, new business four, unfinished business three, and then revert back to what you see on this piece of paper. Okay. To new business two. Okay. And you'd like to have Chief Acord speak about yeah, his report. We'll, we'll have Chief Acord uh, speak at the beginning of the Commission Committee of Authority report. Okay. Does anybody have anything else <coughs> they'd like to? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Sure. If there's no other changes, all those uh, in favor of amending the agenda as suggested, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Am. Okay. And that brings us to our commission committee of reports. Uh, we do have, before I get into uh, this other item, uh, we've got a couple of places vacants on planning commissions, uh, also under the CAPC, hospital, and cemeteries. So anybody out there in TV land or any citizens wanting to volunteer and help do service work, please come down to City Hall and fill out an application. And in there, I would like to, we've had some uh, comments recently about the crime uh, in Eureka Springs and crime rate. And while well, Thomas, our chief, is uh, getting ready to retire, I want to recognize his uh, four years that he's been chief of police. Uh, Thomas, you have done a great job. I've just been, I uh, couldn't ask for a better chief of police. I think the city's been real blessed to have you here. And, and I know you've, you've grown up here and you're going to be sorely missed uh, with uh, everything that you do. And I know the department's going to be remiss not having you here. So I want to take this time to recognize you and, and your uh, four years that you've been here, but also the 15, 16 years that you were serving as, as a policeman. Uh, in downtown police, you were our first bicycle policeman. And you established the, uh, the standards for uh, police uh, patrolled in the downtown area. And really appreciate that <coughs> very much. But in the meantime, if you wouldn't mind, would you... Would you mind telling us a little bit about our national crime statistics and, and how that relates to Eureka Springs crime rates? And yes, sir. Is this on? Or is it just for the camera? Okay. Uh, thank you for the 
uh, sentiment, the accolades. Uh, uh, I don't want to turn this into a good farewell speech, but it's been <laughs> an absolute honor being able to grow up here, see the community develop, and be able to serve it. And it'll always be in my heart. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm not falling off the face of the earth. I'm a phone call away, so. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tissue, anyone? Uh, uh, yes, the mayor's asked that I speak with, uh, with the council in, in the, in, at the meeting regarding the city, the incorporated city's crime statistics, and some of the reporting methods or interpretation of reports that are presented on all on various levels. The, the city has a population of 2,075, or just over 2,000 people. On a national average, uh, police departments would have like three officers for, for 2,000 people. Um, as you all know, we, our entire industry is tourism, and we might have 10,000 people in town on a weekend, um, upwards of a, a million two uh, annually will come here. Um, therefore, we actually have 12 officers uh, and we have some reserves and part-time officers. And there are times when we're, we're maxed out. This weekend's a perfect example with the Volkswagen parade. Our entire on-the-road department was tied up and there was an accident. So we managed, we dealt with it, but the number of officers merit, are merited by the, the, the population, the heads and beds that we get in town. To speak to the crime statistics, I like to think, and I've grown up here, uh, as a lot of, I know y'all have, I like to think of our town as a, a little Mayberry in North Arkansas. And I think for the most part, um, folks feel 100% safe walking to their cars at night, going out to eat downtown and walking back to their cars. There's, uh, there is, and I, I know I'm biased when I say this because it's, it's I'm part of the police department, but there is no bad crime statistics that here. And every place has crime. Since civilization, the dawn of time, you, you, people do things that are considered criminal by different societies. You can't get away from that. So yes, we, have, we take a lot of incident reports through the year. Um, as you can see, I don't have one of those in front of me. Um, no, the, yeah, I don't have one to look at. <coughs> You can, you can see the number of uh, offense and incident reports that we take every year. That's a high number uh, when you think about 12 officers taking seven, 800 reports in a year's time. But we take reports on every call we get virtually. So somebody has a, a car in their yard and it get, has to get towed or there's an accident, that's, that's part of that statistics. But when you start looking at the number of crimes that we have, uh, a lot of the national reporting systems report it based on a, a population of 100,000 and they scale up or down from that. Uh, that could skew numbers if our reporting system goes to what's called NIBRS, it's the National Institute Bureau of Reporting System. And when law enforcement all across the country submit those numbers, it, it's all based off of that per capita. So you translate every report an officer does and, and enters it into our system, then our, manage, our office manager ships that to the, to the NIBRS reporting system. And as an example, the word assault and, and the word battery. In Arkansas, that means one thing. In Texas, it means something else. So little nuances like that will play a factor. Um, but all in all, I, I've read or heard that there was a report out there that said Eureka Springs had three murders. We have, and I think that was in the last three years or five years. We haven't. Um, You've lived here longer than me. You've lived here longer than me. I know the last murder that I can remember was 16, 17 years ago. The hammer. Behind the yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah, so I, I, we don't have murders. Uh, we've taken rape reports, but uh, I can't think of the last time one went past the prosecutor. Um, and I, I say that not trying to belittle the call, but in a town that gets this many people through their city limits in a, in a season, um, you, you don't know who's in town at any given time. Uh, these people could be on vacation and there's, they get in a fight and there's a battery report. Uh, but the good thing about it is it's, everybody else still feels safe. Um, 
We have drugs in this town like every other community in the country. Uh, drugs are a, can be a stemming point or starting point for peripheral crimes. Uh, we make, uh, we make a, a lot of case dr drug investigations and we take down the organizations that are distributing them, not going after the little guy or the user. We're going after the, the bigger organizations that are distributing heroin, methamphetamines. Uh, they're, they're, that leads to other crimes. You see the thefts go up in an area where there's a sudden increase in methamphetamine use. Um, do you feel safe living here? I mean, that's the question that I really want to ask people that live or come and visit in this town. I, I've not heard anybody come up to, to us or any of our officers and just feel like their lives are in danger or they're, they're unsafe. Um, so, you know, I ask you guys that. Do you feel safe here? Do you feel safe walking out to your car at night or walking your dog up and down the street? Uh, we're not without our crime, for sure. We're not without our speeders, and we're not without our inconsiderate people that don't pay attention for the person walking their dog at 5 in the morning or, or, or whatever. But I, I don't, we don't have a violent crime problem. Uh, we try, and I will say this. We've got a, an officer that we just, uh, that just started a several months ago and he's from Fayetteville. He worked at Fayetteville downtown on Dixon Street. He's a really great, good officer. And we got to talking today about our juvenile crime. And since 2002 or three, our juvenile crime has just plummeted. Well, this officer who has been dealing with four or five calls a day in Fayetteville came over here and he said, you guys don't have a juvenile crime problem. Whatever y'all did to fix it 15 years ago worked. And we're still doing that. We've, we've, uh, we still try to interact with the kids at the school, and that played a, played a, a very positive factor. Um, our mission is to ensure that each and every resident and visitor feels safe. Every officer, every dispatcher, every volunteer, it's in their heart. It's in their, it's in their soul to, to take the job that they've, they've volunteered to take and sworn an oath to uphold and... Um, I mean, they're, they're there because they want to be and they want to serve. And that, I, I think we've got one of the best departments that I've ever known. And that's, I'm not speaking about me. That's them. That's just the, the, the inner soul of everybody that's working there. I know I got off tangent a little bit, but <laughs> questions? Yes, ma'am. Thomas, it, it, looking at the 2017 statistics, it looks like the 2018, you're going to be even less than 2017. I mean, well, it's yes and no. That remember, this is through June the 8th. Oh, okay. So it's not even, not even quite mid-year. And okay. some of our busiest periods, October's a busy month for Eureka Springs, so calls go up in, in that month. Um, and those are going to generally be bike, traffic, noise, that type of call, um, and then those lead, can lead to other things. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head what our, like this year's most common arrest is, mm -hmm. but it's likely to either be DWI or a warrant. For, and okay. warrants can be from anybody, you know. Well, it, it looks like from each year it's kind of less and less and less. Well, on some things, yes. Um, the, the no I'm kind of proud of the noise violations. and. Oh, yeah. They, they, they saw a steady decrease, and I, I mean, I, I do want to take or have the department and the guys take some credit for that, but also I've noticed in the last three years that the people that own the establishments that are getting the bikes are being uh, out, they're, they're kind of preemptive in saying, look, guys, we want you to have fun, but if you go down and start revving your pipes, the cops will stop and ticket you. And it's, I think that word of mouth has helped. So does it appear that Eureka is being credited with what is happening in the zip code? Oh, I'm, yeah, thank you, Ann. Um, see, this is what happens when I get off tangent. I saw the report that claimed the, the one that we had the three murders, and I went back and looked at that, whatever the time frame was. It matches what the county does. So I think these, the national reporting systems are saying, okay, let's get the crime rate for the 72632 zip code and the 72631 zip code. And I don't remember what Beavers is, but anything on the western side of, 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 of the Kings River, yeah. Um, and so that all went into those statistics. And yes, the county has had three murders in that time frame. 
just on the side of the river. But so when those reports come out, do they always specify towns? Oh, honestly, that's the first one of those. I see, I see official like police statistics, um, but I've, I, that's the first. I don't. I don't want to. I don't know how to classify it. If it's a government generated one or, or private, I don't know. But that's the first one I actually saw. So I, I'm not sure. I would assume what they do is is poll or solicit the data from NCIC, which is the National Crime Institute or Crime Information Center, or uh, the NIBRS reporting system, which agencies do report to. But not all agencies do report to that. What uh, is NIBRS? NIBRS, N-I-B-R-S, the National Institute, uh, I can't, Bureau of Reporting Systems. There may not even be an I in it, maybe it's just N-B-I-R-S. <coughs> so they, they accept the data from law enforcement agencies that submit, but some don't actually submit to it. I know of a couple in, in our area that, that, you know, they take the reports, the public doesn't, you know, the victim or the, nobody on the outside knows, but whoever decides to report to NIBRS. I think it's also based on city size um, and some just aren't compliant, I guess. I don't know. Okay. But NIBRS is official. I know that's true data, but not everybody submits to it. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions? Thomas, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank all of y'all. Y'all should all be thanked and appreciated for your service. Uh, all right, that brings us up to public comments. Uh, please remember to hold your comments to three minutes, if you would, please. Rachel Bricks, One Magnetic. I'm a certified professional dog trainer, one of only 12 in the entire state of Arkansas, and I've been working with dogs in professional capacity for over 10 years. In my professional opinion, if code has changed to weaken the requirements for dog enclosures, I would highly recommend consulting professional organizations like the ASPCA, the American Veterinary Medical Association, and the Humane Society of the United States for their science-based recommendations. Equally as important, if you change this code, I would recommend you include a time limit that dogs can be kept confined in such a space. Most people, professional or not, know dogs should not be crated nearly 24 hours a day. Yet the situation of extreme confinement on North Main has been visible from my house across the street for more than a year and a half. Why code has not been enforced throughout this entire time is a mystery, as I know the animal control officer has repeatedly been to the location. It is also my professional opinion the situation is in violation of Code Chapter 60405-A, which states dog must, dogs must, of course, have food, water, shelter, which, of course, keeps them alive, and also humane care and treatment, quote-unquote. Because of years of research and thousands of years of domestication, veterinarians, behaviorists, trainers, etc., and even most dog owners know humane care and treatment includes regular exercise, mental stimulation, and, of course, human companionship for their overall health and well-being. These poor dogs have maybe 15 minutes per day of total human contact and then are in a shed that's barely half of what our current code stipulates is legal. Oftentimes only being walked a few feet outside of the door onto concrete to relieve themselves and then return to their seclusion. Moreover, the windows have long ago been blocked out and at least one of the dogs is a senior who should not have to live out his days in loneliness, darkness, and isolation. Especially since we have codes to protect him from such treatment. Contrary to what Mickey repeatedly told you at the last meeting, both the definition on page 127 of code and Ordinance 2150 does in fact read 100 square feet per dog. The fact is, the current situation is currently in violation of current code. Why would council consider changing code to bend to the person willfully violating it? Why bother changing or even having codes if they're not enforced? We claim to be an animal-friendly town. An animal-friendly town does not weaken its animal welfare code, but rather strengthens it. Please do not change code to accommodate citizens who are in violation, but instead change code to protect animals from inhumane treatment. And darn it, enforce it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jay Fusaro, 21 Owen Street, and I'm president of the Board of Good Shepherd Humane Society. 
The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals suggests owners of large active dogs use one of two size enclosures, either 10 by 10 or 5 by 15 feet. Small dogs should rarely have enclosures of less than 5 feet in width plus a length of no less than 10 feet. There have been two recent incidents involving dogs in less than adequate enclosures as per Eureka Springs codes. The Good Shepherd Humane Society, as supported by the ASPCA suggestions, conclude that the current enclosed enclosure descriptions and ordinance number 2150 section 1 number 6 under enclosures is in keeping with the mission of humane treatment of animals inside of Eureka Springs. Changing or revising the current law could and would allow for less than humane treatment of animals that reside in Eureka Springs. And the Good Shepherd Humane Society asks that the current code and descriptions not be changed. Thank you. Good evening, Fiona Richards. I'm here speaking on behalf of those who can't speak for themselves and basically ask that the current codes and, um, current codes and descriptions not be changed for the animals. Thank you. Oh, where was your address? Where do you live? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I apologize. 1631 County Road 266. Hello, I'm Ferguson Stewart, 7 Harvey Road, Eureka Springs. Um, I'm here basically going to change gears a little bit. I'm here to talk about what happened to me when I first came in Eureka Springs in December 2012. Well, the first thing I did was I went to the mayor's office and I asked him, what do you need? I'm a manager, I got skills, and he said, we need you on, we need you on these commissions. So I signed up for the park commission. And so I'm proud to hear that we've got so many individuals in this town signing up to run for office. And I hope that those here, some of these are right here today, but I hope that the rest of the citizens will not only lit, fill those vacancies on these commissions, but let's back up these people running for office because that's what makes our republic work and our democracy today. So thank you. Good evening, uh, my name is Cameron Denauer. I'm a resident of War II. Um, speaking to you as an individual, as a person and citizen, um, about something that took place at the last council meeting that I find very disturbing. Um, Alderman Green likes to talk about the welfare of the animals, but she refuses to look at the big picture. She mentioned it's a shed. She doesn't mention that said shed is 240 square feet. She doesn't mention that said shed has a floor, a non-leaking roof, windows, running water, an air conditioner. None of that was brought up. Unfair, biased. That is not fair to the dog owner. That is not fair to the property owner. That is not fair to the business. If you want to get into what's fair for animals, then you've also got a dozen wild dogs with vagrants out there behind the out colony. It's against the law to not have vaccinations. It's against the law to not have a license. They don't go to the vet. They don't, get, they don't have proper food, proper shelter, proper water. But you go after somebody who's a business, you just try to skew the situation to appease neighbors and friends when there's an even bigger problem down the street. If that's the type of information you're going to be, out, be putting out there, you don't need to be sitting there. You need to be honest, you need to be straightforward, and you need to make sure you put all the facts out there in an unbiased manner, Ms. Green. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jim Evans, animal control officer, better known as the dog catcher. Uh, I've done this for 10 years. I'm pretty well established and versed in everything that y'all are talking about. 
uh, that place on North Main. You know, it's hard. I pull up on a lot of places. I get a lot of cruelty calls. I wrote tickets for cruelty. But it's my decision when I pull up right then. If I ever have a question, I'd call Thomas or get an officer there. When you have a building, and I have actually stood across the road and watched them. One day I watched them, just caught it accidentally. I wasn't just sitting around waiting on them. I caught them twice walking the dogs in the morning. And I caught them once another time. And she's got, she told me, six or seven people that go down, take care of it. In the wintertime, of course, everybody likes to call about cruelty. They don't know what's going on. So I went over there, and they had them in a building. It was like, I mean, cold, 20 degrees. Well, I go over to this building, and it's heated. They have all kinds of visqueen on the floor. The guy says, I walk them two or three times a day. Whether he does, I don't know. But you don't know he doesn't. You know, so, you know, when you start calling cruelty, you either have to leave it up to my discretion or the police officers. And I will not have a dog that is treated cruelty. I won't, I won't stand for it. I've owned dogs all my life. And when you start talking about the size of a dog and all that kind of stuff, what you're talking about is a 10-pound poodle does not need the square foot of a German Shepherd, of a, a Husky, Eskimo Husky or whatever it is. They don't need that much room. But they need to be turned out. And I can't run a schedule around town figuring out how many times everybody's walking their dog per day. That's impossible. Most everybody I know is good. Anytime I get a cruelty call, I go. And I've walked in backyards, and I didn't like what I seen. And when I see it, I fix it. And like I said, I've wrote cruelty tickets, and I'll fix it. But it's hard. I don't know other than go to the chief or an officer. It's my decision, and so I'm going to make it. I don't back off from making it. And I'm, I, you know, with friends and neighbors, a lot of times, and I know it's probably my fault, but I feel sorry, you know, for the animals. But, you know, we're, we're supposed to be among friends and neighbors. So... Does that mean I quit? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know you don't want No, I was just getting on the roll. <laughs> thank you all. That it? All right, that concludes our public hearing, our public comments, rather. Uh, and under uh, new business, um, we do have a public hearing scheduled, speaking of which. So if I can have a motion to... Uh, Hold the public hearing. Hello. The second. second. All right. Uh, Jay Stollard is here somewhere. Yes. Okay. Uh, Brown, we're public hearing, so okay. what, this is regarding the completion of the Flint Street project, which thankfully we're completed. Okay. My name is uh, Jay Stollard. I'm the Senior Grants Administrator with the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District. The city received a little over $200,000 grant uh, to repair the Flint Street uh, cave-in. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's get the wire here. Yeah, the city received a $200,000, a little bit more than $200,000 grant uh, from the Community Development Block Grant Funds through the state to repair the uh, collapse over there at Flint Street. And... Uh, Took us almost two years to get environmental clearance from the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, but the project went fairly quick once we got there. Uh, basically, we've uh, spent all of the grant funding, and the city had to uh, include some other additional funding. Uh, the paved area was larger than the bid had spec, so they had reached an agreement with the contractor. You know, if these guys are on site and they're rolling asphalt, it's always best to get the best deal you can while they're here. 
Uh, and so we know that uh, uh, little additional asphalt and a drainage in the street, a nice culvert to drain the water out. And as far as I know, during the last nice rain, it was draining, huh? Yeah. Yep. Draining pretty good. It was a little wet to be standing out there, but it was draining well. So other than that, the public hearing is a required element of the grant. It, uh, we use it more to report to the public that the uh, grant was successfully completed and we spent all the funds. And then we didn't have any uh, issues or problems with uh, any states or laws or regulations or nobody came and closed us down for anything. Although we found some interesting things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although I didn't get to see some of the some of the bottles, I did get to see the rest of the uh, the car and the trolley line stuff and a few other items. So pretty interesting. So if there's any additional questions, I'll be uh, yes, ma'am. Glad to answer. Okay. Are you in charge of like the architecture at all of this digging of a hole and filling in? Oh no. No. Okay. No, I'm the grants administrator. Okay, so that's it. Strictly yep. grants. Okay, My job is to make sure that the city <laughs> is in compliance with a boatload of rules and regulations. <laughs> so this money actually originates at HUD and remains federal up until the moment we spend it and close this grant out. It's still federal funds. So. Okay, then never yeah. mind. <laughs> I'm not the designer. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I, is this uh, CDBG funds? Yes, this was uh, CDBG funds, Community Development Block Grant funds. Uh, HUD issues these dollars to the state in a lump sum, a block grant, and the state uh, decides where and when they want to spend the money. And uh, an opportunity for us to apply for the City of Eureka Springs came open, and uh, we were successful in the application and the uh, it just took us a long time to get there because of the uh, state historic preservation. But anytime we spend uh, government dollars in Eureka digging a hole, it they usually want us to look at it and jump through lots of hoops. It's okay. We can persevere through it. Oh, yes, CDBG funds. Yes, sir. No, nothing? Okay. Any but other questions? My, my understanding is this was the first time we've gotten CDBG money in... Since I worked the sewer line coming down off the Crescent Hotel, mm -hmm. wherever that was, uh, 98 or somewhere around there, 97 or 98, I think. Well, it's 10 years. Then. It's been a long time because you all basically had uh, higher median household income and higher low to moderate income no numbers, misleadingly so. Uh, they were not working in your all's favor. Currently, the government considers you all poverty stricken and you qualify Good. for lots of stuff. Good. So, Let's keep it yeah. that way. And that's nice, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> you know. Good news, bad news. It's good news, bad news, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yes, you do qualify for community development block grant funds these days. It's just a matter of figuring out how to spend them. Yes, ma'am. So should we be uh, applying for more grants? I would assume that a lady named Carolyn Baker that works in my office as of next Wednesday would be who you'll be needing to talk to. Okay. As I am retiring at the end of the year <coughs> after... 27 years here and three years in central Arkansas. So, yeah. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, in answer to your question, we had to complete this project first before we can begin to think about applying for others. But we've already put our uh, discussion in with a couple other projects. Okay. One of them is a uh, new water line going down to the sewer treatment plant because that's a major, one of our major leaks that we're mm -hmm. having. Uh, Black Bass Dam is another one that uh, we're yep. trying to find money for somewhere. And it'll take me about uh, another four or six weeks to completely finish the paperwork yep. and uh, get the state's approval. So uh, we should be wrapping this one up. Typically the applications open up once a year. Uh, it's usually in August. Uh, the city should be in a, a fine position to uh, be ready to do uh, uh, a round of applications come next year. Should have a lot of a lot of plan already. So, if there's no other questions, nothing else. No. All right, well then Thank I guess you. we uh, well. consider Thank public you. hearing closed. Yes, and uh, if y'all don't mind, I'll drive to the house because it's almost an hour and a half ride. Okay. So. Thank right. you. If y'all don't mind, I'll make an exit. Okay. Uh, I'll bring us up to our next item, which is the. Um, New business number four, discussion of the panhandling downtown. So get a motion to discuss. 
So moved. Second. Uh, okay, I think this was uh, Ms. Green and yes. Mr. Thomas. I have just some things. A uh, constituent sent me if he passed down, and it really kind of a nice little one on one. And why I brought this to the table is, and actually, number five also kind of comes in with this the animal feces. But there was just merchants telling me they're having problems, but they also said that the police have been really handling it good. But I guess it, it's periodically, Thomas, are, are you kind of having a problem? off and on with it not our buskers that's not what I'm talking about the people that play music or draw pictures but kind of what Mr. Cameron was talking about the people with their dogs are kind of soliciting and using the dogs as part of their game sure please do, do, do you think I, I, everybody that I talk to I am kind of keeping calling people said right. you've really handled it well but it kind of oh. uh, that was in your packet oh okay <laughs> so oh. are you having problems still okay so yes we are uh, we've kind of always had a, an attraction to folks that travel mm -hmm. by foot okay. and uh, folks that travel by foot alone a lot of times will have a dog for a companion I have seen and read and talked with other officers from other cities uh, that maybe have a larger problem than we do, uh, um, only for their population size anyway, but uh, they've actually talked to some of these folks and they use the dogs for that sole purpose mm -hmm. to going somewhere. And it, A lot of times no one will give a, 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 any money to just a person standing there, but everybody has a heart for the dog well, and, sure. th and they use that. So. With that being said, it does come up and it goes down. It used to, uh, the winter time really had an effect and we almost didn't have anybody that were, were living on the streets or, or um, hanging around. They usually go somewhere warmer or find somebody to stay with. Summer comes back, it always ramps back up. And it does still go in small peaks and valleys because we try to be proactive. When, they, when we first see folks that we don't realize or, or we don't re recognize, and, and this is a fine line. We're a tourist community. We accept everybody. This mm -hmm. you, I, just because you have a white shirt on, I can't come up and say, "Hey, I think you're a problem." Right. So we have to be really delicate on how yeah. we do this. Uh, for not just legal reasons, uh, but for the morality. And we, you know, we, everybody is afforded, you know, sure. the, the welcome here. Right. But then you get four or five or six of them show up within four or five or six days, and then we'll have some criminal mischief calls come in. Um, uh, small petty theft calls uh, the feces on the sidewalk I that's I, I don't want to say it's new to me it's not new to me but I didn't realize that it was a, a recent spike or increase in that well the, the reports I was kind of getting from um, merchants and Cameron over there is that kind of the ones that people have been talking about mm -hmm. their it's their dogs more than anything else and I, I, that's not in with the panhandling what I was told early on there were some kind of aggressive panhandlers that I, I believe your well, officers really handled. Um, so every year, and I can remember this back mm -hmm. when I was on the bike, once or twice during a season we would get a van come in from mm -hmm. Tennessee, Mississippi, mm -hmm. five or six guys would jump out, guys and girls would jump out and they would they might drop some off downtown, some off at Pine Mountain, mm -hmm. some off wherever. And they go in and solicit stuff and, and it varies. It might be selling work boots or, or whatever. It they're not in town ten minutes and someone's calling us. It's mm -hmm. always been that way. And we can easily, you know, take some time and find three or four guys walking with a briefcase mm -hmm. or or find you know, find them really quick. And normally that goes here you can't do this here's the ordinance and they leave every now and then they become combative um, we've had several that ended up getting arrested because they had mm -hmm. warrants out of other states uh, and I classify those as a little different than folks that may be downtown mm -hmm. panhandling um, that's almost like a commercial organization they do that cross-country mm -hmm. uh, so the folks downtown um, <coughs> When they're coming in town with their dogs like that, they're not here to panhandle. So I don't know if we're confusing the term 
or if it's just their presence that well, what I was hearing that these were panhandling now do you think we have more any more of a problem than normal not on panhandling I don't okay I, I, I mean I haven't seen the numbers at the PD mm -hmm. for people that we've either had to make contact with and warn them or issue citations okay. uh, th I mean nothing that jumps out at me mm -hmm. um, usually it's a conversation and they, we tell the, the, the person you have to go to the, if you want to sell anything in this town you have to go to the city clerk mm -hmm. and get a business license okay. and then even then it's subject to you know right. to rules so it is are we having more of a vagrant, vagrancy problem this year than normal um, I'm gonna quantify that by so I'm going to say no and then say I'm going to separate vagrancy from people that are I, we call them transients I don't mm -hmm. want to call them homeless because a lot of these folks are not homeless they're right. they're, they're just on a sabbatical or they're uh, okay. you know they're just traveling and some aren't some are criminals that are, are bad problems mm -hmm. and it's it's easy to identify once we start making contact with these folks who we got to watch mm -hmm. for so yes this year we've seen a larger increase during our summer season than, than I can recall in the past mm -hmm. I don't know how significant of an increase that would actually be probably you know, uh, in a month's time we we might have had an extra 10 or 15 that we've had to deal with okay. um, but I, I haven't seen a, a anything that would indicate that we've got a problem okay above and beyond well I had a lot of shop owners ask me to bring this to the table sure, and yeah. I'm glad I did yeah and I really appreciate you taking the time and, and we do try and if anybody and, and most of the folks that have shops know all it takes is a quick call every officer that works here knows the protocol for what to do with this um, and the differences because some people can come in and, and they can be a, a charity organization and mm -hmm. they're not soliciting they don't have to sell you anything mm -hmm. they're maybe they're giving you a brochure or saying will you donate to this or whatever mm -hmm. different set of laws and the park Basin Park is a different uh, set because mm -hmm. they the Parks Commission controls mm -hmm. who can do what in there right. and we'll enforce that but we you know that's a different Right. I mean, we have a lot of buskers on the street yeah, that yeah, yeah. really aren't a problem, and, and I don't want to yeah. lump them in. I'm just, sure. like I said, bringing what, what's been asked of me. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to explain to them about the website like you told me a few months ago? Sure. Um, <laughs> is there any water in here? Or something my mom I've got peppermint coffee. <laughs> is that all that is? Peppermint yep. coffee? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, um, there are websites that um, folks that travel like that, like on foot or, or back. I, I want to say like someone that wanted to go backpacking in Europe mm -hmm. after college or something. Some of the, that's that's what a lot of these people are doing. Some not though. So there's a website that, and I've not personally been to it, but um, some of the officers have, and it basically outlines. The United States of America and where hey go to this town and it has like the the what's that hotel rating thing you know where you can leave comments something like yeah, that okay you know this town don't go here they'll run you off the second they find you this town it's great they don't care you know you can burn the town down and they won't care and it's <laughs> so it's like a, a a database for them to go see and then just today we were talking about it again in a, at a briefing at the PD the Fayetteville officer said that when they were dealing with, remember the deal with the signs? Fayetteville passed the ordinance, said you can't do it, and then Supreme Court shot it down. So, mm -hmm. and so they were dealing with, those guys would fight over their corners. They didn't really have a problem with them interacting with the merchants or with the vehicles, but they'd fight over their corners. So he got, they, they had to arrest one, and he explained and went to the website, there's a site for those people okay. that says Fayetteville, Arkansas, exit 75 off of 49. Um, you can make three hundred dollars an hour if you go from ten a.m. to noon or something like that, and and then every site like that. <laughs> so there's data for these folks to to, to access for different various reasons. Okay. So yes, there is a website okay. that I I we were talking a couple months ago, and I kiddingly said, "Boy, it sounds like they have a website." He goes, "They do," and I almost had a heart attack. So they do know where handouts are good. It used to be you'd go, they'd come here because they knew they could get a free meal, free lodging, and free gas through the churches who finally had to sit on that. And so, yeah, we, we need to rest and we them want off to help over all the jail and help. end it. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
We watched one guy get in a Lexus after uh, he was. I mean, uh, yeah. a Lexus or an Acura, one of the. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, but yeah. I mean. So according, do you know according to the website, is Eureka Springs? Yes. On yes. Uh, from what I've been told, I've not visited. I'm not even sure the uh, actual address of it, but I had several people tell me about it, and I don't remember what our rating was. But <laughs> <laughs> it's on there. I mean, Did it's, evil it's get there. mean and make him shut him down. <laughs> I do know that we have to be careful. There's uh, two communities, um, Fort Smith, I think Fairwell, maybe even Springdale, currently have active lawsuits on um, panhandling. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, in fact, I think one of them had to revise their ordinance. I think that was fatal. Hmm. Uh, was it because of uh, like a business license issue? Because that's no, our that's no, our catch-all. Because of trying to keep people from panhandling. <coughs> yeah. You know, and, and so it, it becomes a other methods of having to deal with it. So it's a big deal with Municipal League. The, the issue is uh, First Amendment rights. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we have to be very careful. We, I mean, and we want to be welcoming to everybody. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't care what you look like or what right. you drive or what you rode in on, mm -hmm. you know. If it's got a kill switch or a tail. <laughs> but uh, we also need to protect our people that live here, mm -hmm. own property here, or visit here. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's why I've always said it's the hardest place to be a police officer is a, is Eureka or a community like this that um, you can't, you have to think before everything, mm -hmm. which is good. Any other questions? For mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Terry, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> well, you're making me cry, buddy. You're the one leaving. <laughs> Well, all right. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. Anything else you need to stay for? I don't believe you want to no. stay for the next one. Mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah. Just in case. Uh, all right. code on top. Yeah. That uh, brings us up to our next item, which is the uh, unfinished business uh, number three, and amending code section on dogs. Miss Nagar, Miss Green. Good morning. So moved. Second. Right. You want to go first? Yes. Okay. Okay, the mayor asked me to get together with the guys, work, go through the code book and rework things and if I could get my notes together properly. Um, one little clarification for Rachel, it's a shame none of those people bothered to say, I used the word for once. Um, I did not repeatedly say for. I had misprinted when I wrote down the uh, 10 by 10 for instead of per and I even said something at the time so just to clarify that I lost my page okay um, the proposed changes now we said now we've been working on this for weeks now the animal control officer the police chief the assistant police chief me approval with the mayor all of this has been gone through extensively and yes we all have a preference of animals over children let me tell you I know that we raised six of them kids the two-legged animals so yes we want to be careful we don't want to be cruel at the same time you have to be understanding of other people and how they relate I said that at the last meeting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the changes that we have made and then if there's any questions I can explain or whatever. Oh, another clarification I wanted to make was I had stated I had not been to the house on Council Street so I was not taking a side on the smell because one side said it stank, the other said no. I do not take sides on that. Also, as far as walking dogs, I actually have a neighbor who walks his dog at midnight. Every night around 12, he's out there walking his dog right by my boxers going crazy in the house. Anyway, so these are the proposed changes that we have come up with. And like I said, these are proposed. Under Title VI and whatever else that you want to add in there, I'm not going to go through every chapter, verse, section. Animals and fowl. The following changes, additions, and removals have been requested by the animal control officer, the police department, the building inspector, 
and during a joint meeting which included me. 100 feet per dog changed to for each dog 40 pounds or more in weight as opposed to a 6 ounce dog. Remove 6 months of age in lieu of the weight change because that's how it stipulates right now anything over 6 months. Well, <laughs> a Great Dane is over 40 pounds at 6 months. Habitat. This is to add. No domesticated animals shall reside in any unoccupied residence or on any unoccupied property. Under other animals, or it's saying uh, no cows, deer, horses, no hogs. We need to add in a section. For a pet pot-bellied pig, the owner shall get and show as needed a licensed veterinarian certificate of breed. A pot-bellied pig is to a hog like a dog is to a wolf. Okay? It's the brain thing with the domestication part. That's the biggest difference. But that is the, the perfect example to use. So whereas you could have a pet pot-bellied pig and he'd be like a big fat snuggly cat, you could not have a hog. Okay? Just like you could have a dog sleeping with you, a wolf, mm, you know. So that's the difference there. The pig shall spend a maximum of five hours a day outside of the residence. The feces shall be removed from the exterior property a minimum of twice weekly and placed in a proper receptacle that is in good usable condition for regular pickup and removal from the property. That's so it doesn't get piled in some beat up little can that can get knocked over and inundate the neighborhood with odor. Exterior property to be assessed as deemed necessary by the ACO, the Animal Control Officer. There shall be a limit of two pot-bellied pigs per residence. Remove all language referring to police officers and replace with ACO. Add all conflicts, reports, or questions shall be handled by the ACO at his or her own discretion. Replace all references to sanitation officer with animal control officer because he is a stipulated sanitation officer for animal related issues. Now those are the changes that police, animal control, building have suggested after going through the whole section. Any questions or needing for explanations? Ms. Green? Jimmy, could you, you come up to the mic? Sure. First of all, Jimmy, I want to say you do a good job, and I think you're humane and kind to the animals. Oh, so yeah. I, Thank so you. So in no way I had any, any problem with you. Oh, no, I've worked with what, you for many years. One, one of the things, we talked about the one on North Main. Mm -hmm. She was going to put a doggy door in and mm -hmm. some fencing. Mm -hmm. And even though that wouldn't be 100 square feet per dog, that's just common sense. They're small dogs. They could go out. Yeah. And and you and I kind of agreed to that because you said inside yeah. it's really small because there's cabinets and everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Rachel's right. They, they, there's no light coming yeah. in there. It, it's roughly 160, I think. Isn't that about what it is? About 160 square feet. But inside and for you three said little dogs, that's, I met with an air conditioner, right. and they don't even stay in there in the winter. Well, the neighbors... And and, and what I do want to say something because Rachel's been blamed for this. Rachel was not the neighbors that called. I did ask Rachel oh, about yeah, it, that, and, that and she's watched. It. But my only thing is just the ASPCA and the Humane Society mm -hmm. and the <clears throat> Society of Veterinarians say a hundred square feet, and. I would rather stick with that and let you use your judgment like we just said. Mm -hmm. The owner would put a little pen outside where those yeah. dogs could go in and out and have some interaction with outside. 
you know, that's maybe sense. if y'all want to talk to her, but she won't do it only because she said the planning commission would never permit a pen outside. Well, I'm not getting into all that. That's not true because but, remember my neighbors with the pit yeah, bulls, we put the yeah, pen out. A hundred square, 165 square feet for three little dogs that weigh 10 pounds is adequate for me with an air conditioner so long as they're walking them. And pretty soon it's going to be two. They've got one that's real old, yeah. and I've wa I've seen I've walked in unexpected. Mm -hmm. I've seen feed water. I mean, they're not they're not in distress down there. I, I don't think they are. No, but, but th what the but neighbors? It, in my eyes, it's just not cruelty. I mean, you say a hundred feet, hundred square feet. Well, where do you draw the line? I mean, if you have a 150-pound dog, do you need 175 square feet? I mean, how much do you want to get into it? If a dog is 8 pounds, it does not need 100 square feet. It just doesn't need it. Probably not, but I know some Boston Terriers that do. Yeah, and, and they just it doesn't need it. You can go to any extreme that you ever want to. You really can. You can take things way over the limit. And what somebody might have an idea of cruelty, I don't. I've owned dogs my whole life. And I've had coon dogs in a pen that was mm -hmm. five by eight and kept them in there. I used them. Mm -hmm. And they were outside. They didn't have air conditioning and heating and, you know, uh, heated water and all that stuff. Well, so I just don't see it. I, I just really don't. But well, what, that's up what, to you what I what I've seen or, or what the neighbors have said is they never see any they see them out once a day if that to me if if the owner is willing to put a pen out or something that's yeah. common sense I mean yeah you know uh, oh you I, I wouldn't mind seeing it but she said there is no way she's <laughs> getting into it with all the planning commission and all the city well, stuff no, so there, you might go talk to her and there, tell her there's no problem but but she is breaking hmm. our code right now yeah and yeah. I and would, she she is <coughs> according to this code <coughs> but that code is wrong it does not have to be a hundred square foot for a little dog this long I mean it, it I mean I, I operate a lot no. and I know it's hard here but I operate a lot on one value is right. common sense I'm, I mean I understand no. but I when I look at a, a situation if I have any problem, I go to him. Mm -hmm. But I work on common sense. I mean, if I think it's cruel, I'll stop it. Mm -hmm. You know. But, you know, a dog in a house that gets walked supposedly two or three times, I'm not there all the time. And I don't, she's no, not running no. a log for me. Nor am I. And, uh, but they got an air conditioner. My dog's never had an air conditioner when I had them outside. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, and most of the time I had them on chain mm -hmm. for the doghouse. Well, again, and, and I'm not calling anybody a liar, but I, I've had these yeah. neighbors, and, and yeah. this isn't, yeah. when I called you this time, this wasn't the first time. Mm -hmm. I've been told about this for the last year. Yeah, yeah. And we do have, we do have a law. I think you could go to Pat and just say, the, the Planning Commission, the HDC, it's a temporary pen, are not going to care if she puts a little pen up, puts mm -hmm. a doggy door, they can go out. Common sense, like you said. I don't know if you've ever talked to her, but that just ain't going to fly. Guys, <laughs> enough, both no, of you. No, okay. it won't, but, okay. you know, hey, the rule, well, the law's the law. And one time she tells me to go down there and take the dogs. The next time she tells me to handcuff her. She ain't giving them up. <clears throat> so I, I, don't, I don't know where we go from okay. here. Well, I, my thing is, I, I would just like to leave the lot it, the way it is. I believe that you have common sense. Yeah. And, and we have rarely had incidents like this. Yeah. So we've had yeah. two. Yeah. And, and they really needed to be addressed. Yeah. And I just... All, all the 100 square feet does is if you push it, I got to enforce it. Right. A poodle does not need a hundred right. square foot. I'm not going to call you. you if, know, if a poodle, I mean, but yes, you got some that do. Yeah, I'm not going to call know. you. And these yeah. neighbors have watched this yeah. for a year, and yeah. they're they're horrified by it. And, yeah. and these are people of good standing. Yeah. They're not trying to start. Okay, calling. guys, that's what this whole thing is about. Let's quit rehashing. 
The whole thing is about fixing it so this kind of thing doesn't happen. Yeah. Habitat. No domesticated animals shall reside in any unoccupied residence or on any unoccupied property. That's pretty much the point of abandoning in a cage, okay? Yeah. Jimmy, does anybody live on North Main? Uh... I don't know. They rent it out. I know that. They I mean, have people. She so has people there every day. So if we were to pass these yeah. laws and there's no one living there, then it's, there's no residence. Well, the, it, it's occupied. That's all I know. Okay. You know, it, it, there's people there. Okay. It's not like uh, uh, over on the council. Okay. Mickey, most of the things you brought up except for the enclosure, you did a great job. Go tell me, tell all of them. We worked our butts off on this. Yeah. Thomas, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm not a dog expert. My dog loves Thomas, you got to go up here. <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll step out of the way on this one. I mean, I'm not a dog expert. I mean, I love dogs, but I'm not a dog expert. I don't. I, I get the luxury of not being able to know if 100 foot is, 100 square foot is enough or not. That's y'all's burden or the state's right. burden or somebody else. I just enforce it or we just enforce it. And, but there is the discretion that is used every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people have gotten pulled over and didn't get a ticket? Mm -hmm. That's the officer's discretion. He pulled you over because you violated the law. He didn't think he needed it. Mm -hmm. We have to do that too. So if, and I stand behind Jimmy when he says if he doesn't think there's true cruelty going on, then uh, I support him in not taking action. Also, you have to remember... Just because you pass a law doesn't mean you're ever, ever, ever going to get a conviction on it because once we write it, a ticket on it and it goes into court, mm -hmm. then it's up to the prosecutor to decide if he wants to take it to the judge and then the judge to decide if they find, you know, which favor they find. So, um, but I, so I, so that being said, my opinion professionally is I'll enforce what laws you do pass, uh, but it's hard on the officer when you leave it vague and say, um, the number 100 square feet, good or bad, at least it's a number that can be measured and can be taken and put on a report. If it's and if it says adequate sized, mm -hmm. who am I to say that's what's adequate for one right. may be somebody else's different opinion. So we can't really enforce that. Right. The the ASPC yeah. said for a small dog, and, and they consider a small dog 20 pounds and under, um, 50 square feet. And, 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 and I, real numbers can be enforced, tangible right. numbers. It's harder. It's not impossible, but it's harder to, to just enforce off of um, ambiguous, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to jump to that right now with my mouth like it is, <laughs> vague statements that, right. uh, that would basically leave it open for 10 people to have 10 different op uh, opinions on it. Okay. And that's also part of why he insisted on changing the wordage so all calls go to the ACO. Mm -hmm. The police cover when they need to, but he's the expert. Right. And, and that was at his, re at his request. Um, I'd like to ask... Wait, wait, just a minute. We've got a question, Mr. Oh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it, it appears to me that, that what this has all uh, done is, is, is brought to the awareness of the community that, that there's... It's, that there can be some things that that may or may not be questionable as far as, uh, as the the care of, of animals. Um, it sounds like that because of this, you know, of the heightened awareness, that people are going to be more alert to it, um, watching for it. Um, this is the first time we've had anything like this come up. Long time. that I can remember so I don't know that it's necessarily uh, the right thing to do to change the law at this time uh, I think we need to maybe just see how it plays out for a while yet um, I don't I don't think that uh, the law enforcement gentlemen are going to you know uh, take a stand one way or the other I understand what Mickey's trying to do but but it's, you know, it, it may not be, these may be just incidences that, that have just happened right now, and, that, and, and it may not be an overall problem. Does that make sense? And plus the fact that it's, people are becoming, you know, more aware of it all the time. I mean, 
animals uh, for many people uh, you know get as good or better treatment than children so um. <coughs> that's it um, we don't want to wait until it comes up again to have to address it again this kind of stuff was missed when this was first written up eons ago the uh, pot bellied pig issue will be coming up if we don't deal with it right now by putting in the habitat line this does definitely stop it from happening it's not that big a deal to change the laws um, especially since we're going to take the full six weeks or you know three meetings to get this done um, I do have a note here I'm supposed to be reading into the record from Nan and Dave Johnson they don't want to see a change in enclosure size requirements they not get they don't want it to get smaller they go along with the American Association for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and the Humane Society which brings me to my second thing could I have the gentleman from Humane Society at the mic for a minute I don't understand this one line near the end how changing or revising the present law could and would allow less than humane treatment of animals you didn't even see what we had written up how can you make a statement like that it's the changing of the law from what it currently is but we could have made it a thousand times better and you would I don't my understanding was that it was this. not going to be more it was going to be Your less understanding was from whom from Melissa it, it doesn't matter Melissa didn't and, even and, know and, what we were talking and, about and, and, let's try to keep this on track here well I am because there's a lot of false info going out that's not false information by saying they can't be on an unoccupied property that's going to make it All less right. humane Mickey. I didn't have that but stated that's what we're changing all right come on uh, well I'm sorry but this is wrong no, we're talking about trying to create an ordinance now well yeah and it's not okay. inhumane last last at the last meeting we talked about 40 pounds or less making enclosure smaller that's where I believe Mr. Farsario, along with conversations with me, got his information. Well, that isn't anything at all so that we had. Let's go ahead and, and head this toward an ordinance. Thank you. Uh, Christy. Um, I will not vote to reduce the size of the pen, period. Um, I, uh, the only part of this that um, I think may be um, advisable would be to add the um, the comment that no domesticated animal shall reside in any unoccupied residence or on any unoccupied property. I do not know where this pot belly pig thing is coming from. It's just out of the blue and no one has shown me that it's needed. Um, I also think that um, changing the, um, the term to animal control officer without seeing how it fits in with the code is inadvisable because I'm not sure what role the animal control officer plays in the code and um, I also think that probably the city attorney would agree with me that um, adding the, the line all conflicts reports or questions shall be handled by the ACO at his or her own discretion would not help him with prosecutions so um, I, I I will support the addition of the ban on having animals in unoccupied residences, but I'm going to vote against the, the rest of this. Right, Mickey. Melissa, you want to explain to her about the uh, pot bellied pigs? And just because you don't know about them doesn't mean they're not coming up? There are some <coughs> pigs in this town. And living as pets and I'm not going to say where and there has been a problem with neighbors because of not cleaning it up the smells make it pretty unbearable for these neighbors to kind of be in their backyard nobody wants to take these pets away but they need to become a little bit more responsible pet owners and Jimmy has absolutely nothing to go on other than livestock and there's like Mickey said there's that little that line between the pot belly or teacup pig that's a pet or a real 
hog, I guess. Uh, and so uh, she, I, I think we, Christy, I think we do need something like this. And I agree with you, Christy. I want no change in the enclosure. But we do need the pig. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And then going along with that, um, would you like to ask the police chief again why he was specifying ACO? All reports go to the ACO or questions. Would you like to ask him again? It's up to us. We can... She said she wouldn't do it because she didn't like it, and I'm saying here's the police chief. Mr. Ask him why. I have my hand up. I would like to be right. I'm sorry, Ms. Kendricks. Thank you. Um, I'm opposed to the pigs because what I'm hearing is that we have a problem with pigs, and so we're changing the code to allow it. I that doesn't sound advisable God. to me. God. Ms. Green. Um, may I address Christy? Um, are, are, we, are there more pigs in town that I don't... I know we have feral pigs. These aren't feral. These are somebody's pets. I recognize that, but they aren't allowed under the current... Hogs are not allowed. Oh. No, no. Pigs. I, excuse no. me. Wait, come on. Let's, uh, we can, there is a difference between pop belly <laughs> pigs and, and hogs. No, that's what this is trying to address. Mm. Okay. Mr. Uh, I think the ordinance now says, you know, livestock, and it, it does talk about, and I don't think it addresses also, you know, pot belly pigs uh, in there saying you can have them in the city. Uh, I did did look up the National Pot Belly Pig Association and uh, what they, re they require, or at least they hope that people who have pot belly pigs, where they are allowed, is uh, basically says adopting a pig is not like adopting a dog regardless of how big or small a pig is he or she is still a pig and have all the characteristics of a pig uh, they're social animals they make much better pets if they have a companion pig which the ordinance proposed does say no more than two so if you do adopt one please consider adopting two which means you have twice you know the, the smell or whatever you, you should be aware that pigs can be quite destructive, not only to your house, but to your yard as well. In fact, they need plenty of time outdoors to root around a natural pig behavior. And when they're young, they scream loudly for their food, which can cause problems with your neighbors. This behavior does not mean a pig is being bad. He's just being a pig. <laughs> they also can reach 200 pounds by age five. Most pot belly pigs are happiest living outdoors with other pigs with plenty of activity in their environment. You should have a spacious yard to root around in, to run and play in, with plenty of shade at all times of the day. Plenty of water to drink along with a shallow pool to wallow in. A comfortable shelter within the yard, so secure fencing around the yard. Based on the above, uh, having pigs in the Stockwell district can be a problem that structures are close together with single family residences and B&Bs located side by side. Fencing in these areas can be difficult based on the terrain and, law, and lack of yard space in this district. Uh, therefore, if we proceed with the pot belly pig part of the ordinance, I would suggest we do not allow pot belly pigs in the historical district because of the problem of, of the terrain and the, and the B and B's and the single favor residences side by side in that area. All right. Uh, Where council want to go with this? You want to take this a little bit at a time? Do we want to talk about have a, a vote on whether or not we want to change to allow pot belly pigs or not? It's not. We might remember that working on this will be three meetings for six weeks, whatever, <coughs> for the people to come voice their opinion now with the knowledge of how the changes are going to be made or suggested to be made. Um, and it gives us plenty of time to do any tweaking and that was something that when we all got together for a meeting on this we all agreed to. 
Um, there would be no early readings mm -hmm. or anything else. This would take the full three this meetings. It hadn't even gotten into the ordinance form yet. Mm -hmm. so uh, no, but that's what I'm saying. So I'm pointing that out. I'm so there's plenty of time. Whether the council wants to put this into an ordinance. And well, so what they part. would like to put into an ordinance. Green. I'd like the the only thing I, I, I agree with Mickey we should look at the pig thing I just would like the enclosure left as it is I trust our ACO I like that and Jimmy are you are, you're like a police officer aren't you Oh really? Okay. Oh, he writes. He writes okay. tickets. So you're not. You're. You're not. Oh, I work with them, and I can. Do okay. It there in about five seconds. Okay. So, so I'd like. I'd like to just let's pursue this with the pigs and see what we can come up with. Are you agreeable to that, Mickey? If you want to leave out this one part and go, that would let's, make more yeah. sense. Let's see if we can get a motion here of some form. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, one question. Jimmy, if we go with this thing for the whole, starting from under the habitat minus the 40 foot, mm -hmm. how do you feel about leaving out the 100 foot per dog um, as opposed to for each dog over 40 pounds. How do you feel about that? That'd be fine with me, but I like adequate space. Okay. And so that gives me, I can look at it and use common sense. So then you can so wing it per incident. Right. right. And I, that, I like Thomas's idea. If it's adequate, I'll be the one that decides it. You okay, know. Okay, so change... Uh, the 100 foot per dog, which was 40 pounds, change it to adequate spacing. Yes. No. What? No. Um, Who wants to prosecute? We want to stop well, people. If they're being cruel, we want to prosecute. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that'll be a different statute. I, I, I would just like to leave it. Jimmy, I, I think, like I said, if, if we can get her to add a, a little Don't space out there. Yeah, but yeah you I think to. you're using common sense. I mean... Well, there's no other way to go. I mean, you can put about, you know, I can run all over town measuring pins and say, well, you're three yeah. foot short. Sorry. Let's, yeah. let's, you. let's try to keep this, okay. you know. Okay. okay, then I make. Simplicity goes a long way, Melissa. Okay. Then I make it a does. motion that we apply these proposed changes starting with the ad and the habitat, ignoring the 100 foot per dog for now. We will continue working on that. So everything but the 100 foot that's in this printout that you guys got. Isn't that what you agreed to? No, because I don't want you, the 100 foot is just left. You're that's what I just one. said. No, you said you're going to still work on it. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm saying for this, from add down. It's not, are you saying that you want to put this into an ordinance form? Yes. Starting yes, yeah, starting from habitat down, okay. leaving out the hundred foot. Okay, I will second that. Well, I know Jimmy's talking. Yes, sir. About not knowing how often the dogs are walked down on North Main because you're not there all the time. No, no, nobody knows. So now you're saying the pigs will only be outside a maximum of five hours a day how, how would that be enforced until tom brought that up to me i he's the only one that's ever complained to me about the pigs being there i've done this for 10 years and the second question is how will you know how often the feces has been removed from the property what i will do is go by occasionally not on a regular basis i'll log it in my report and I will check, and I want them to know that I'm coming. I think this lady, I think she is getting ready to leave town, and hopefully she probably take her pigs with her. So, you know, that would solve a lot of problems, but I, I never even knew there was a pot-bellied pig here, so I've been here, I've been driving by there. I've never smelt, seen anything. I never smelt anything when I was there. Like I said, I've had one complaint. Well, I just, my concern all. is that 
we have a lot of complaints about not enforcing ordinances. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can enforce something that says your pig can't be outside more than five hours a day yeah. unless you sit there for a week. Yeah, yeah, and and two, it, the yard has to be cleaned up. You can put hours on it, not hours on it, but I will inspect it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, I mean, it's not like I have 35 places to go. There's only one house with pigs, and hopefully she's going to leave and take it, take them with her, and we won't even have to bother about it. But until then, I will. Again, it's common sense. You just got to use common sense. I try to work with all my friends and neighbors here. I, I don't look at everybody here as an enemy. I mean, I work with them. I take more dogs home than I put in our kennel. And, or, you know, I take them home. You know. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Mr. I'd like to call the question. Well, before we get off on that, I want to answer, say something to Mr. Thomas. I think that five hours, um, if you didn't have that in there, then theoretically they could keep the pigs out there 24 hours a day. Right. And I think that's what the, they're trying to set a limit on that. I understand that, but I'm. I'm yeah. Just and yeah. I think you would reinforce it. How would you yeah. enforce it? I mean, you can. That's that's an enforceable. There's a time thing. And I spoke with this lady too, Mr. Mayor, and she said those are those are my kids. She puts them in the bathtub and bathes them and does all that. She said I just let them out for a little while and put them right back in the house. All right, I we've got a, a motion to you thank call the question. Get a second on that. I'll second that. All right. Any discussion on the question? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, call the question. Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So the uh, motion is to put the uh, recommendations here in the ordinance form and bring back to the council. From Habitat Down. From Habitat Down. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Any board discussion? All those? Yeah. Uh, all those in favor, see if I'm saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. I am. I'm opposed. I'm opposed. I'm opposed. I'm opposed. I'm opposed. No. No. Oh, well, good. We'll send all the pigs and barking dogs down there. Okay. All right. So, notice we did all that work for nothing. All right. And that's an item. Did you hear, Jimmy? It's dead. They wouldn't pass it, so you're on your own again. Yeah. Motion to on all of it. Point of order. Motion to discuss. Resolution for Second. Second. All right. Uh, I think we have uh, in our packet here. We've got the. What? I've lost mine somewhere. Uh, resolution for the mid-year budget uh, adjustment. We went over in our workshop. That was a shame. Uh, so if we can get a motion um, to sign a sign a number and read the passage. No such question, Mr. McCormick. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, sign the uh, a resolution a, uh, for uh, uh, sign a mid year budget. Approval, uh, sign of the number, and read the back. I'll second that. Discussion? Okay, hearing none. Just think, right? Oh. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Hubert? Yes. 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 The resolution number will be 736, a resolution amending the adopted 2018 budget for the city of Arkansas as a result of the mid year budget review process. Whereas, in the of the city council, the city council the 2018 fiscal budget should be amended to reflect the following changes in both revenue and expenditure budgetary amounts as set forth hereafter. 
Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, Section 1. This resolution shall be known as the 2018 Mid-Year Budget Resolution for the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas for the 12-month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018 and the attached documents present revisions to, estimate, to estimates for revenues and expenditures for the period. All revenues and appropriations are based on estimated revenues and all estimates are subject to change during the budgetary period. Section 2, the amounts for revenues and expenditures proposed in this 2018 mid-year amended budget are hereby authorized and appropriated for the purpose set forth the calendar year ending December 31, 2018. And the documents, of course, are attached. Your business day. Uh, okay, our next item is uh, get a motion to discuss uh, the quick claim deeds. Motion. motion to discuss. Second. All right. In your packet, uh, we have four quick claim deeds uh, that Bentonville Bella Vista Trail Places Association is wanting to deed over to the city. This is the area that's uh, adjoining the north of uh, Lake Leatherwood Park, uh, starting up the top of the mountain, coming down. Uh, the I, I guess I can go through here. There's two areas when you're looking at the overall deed packages. Uh, track number one, the northernmost part which is labeled one in your right hand corner also known as Mason. The track two, the Bentonville Bella Vista Trailblazers are keeping. They're deeding the eastern section of that track. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. The next item, uh, two, which is a good one, is the entire track uh, of 7.29 acres given to the city. Same thing for track three, which is right below that, noted as the reed track. And then item four, again, it's the eastern side of the Wilson track. Uh, that's 6.74 acres. And in the log cabin in the house, the Bentonville Bella Vista Trailblazers are keeping. Mm -hmm. Mr. McClellan? Just for clarification, is the in the uh, track uh, four, yes, it is. Yes, sir. Um, the 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 line uh, that goes from the top left corner of it to uh, the midway, the one that has the bend in it. Yes, sir. Is that going to be the property line? Yes, sir. So, okay, because there was a kind of a line that was looked like it had been penciled in there, and I didn't know if they were no, that's the trying to make it a dotted line, and I think that's the way the legal description. Okay, so so what's the aggregate acreage that we're we're getting? I'm not really sure I understand oh. that. Uh, you know, I haven't figured that out. So it's almost 11. It's all, it's a little over seven. We got 10, 17, uh, 18, uh, 18, 28.4 plus 8, uh, 20. Okay. 36. Okay. 37 acres. Okay, that's. I was just wondering for sure what that was on that bottom track. 8.7 acres. I know it's got a little hard to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On there, it should be better on the, the blow up. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, no, I take that back. It's 6.74 acres. On if it's appropriate, I'll, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we uh, assign this resolution a number and read it for passage. Second. All right. Get a discussion. I am very, very disturbed by the reversionary clause in these deeds. And what the reversionary clause is, is the right for them to take back the property um, simply upon 30 days notice if they um, perceive that the uh, city is not using it for the purposes 
that they are donating it. And uh, this is really, it doesn't give us an opportunity to cure. Um, it allows them to get an injunction against us without posting a bond, which is not usually the way you get injunctions. Um, I find this dangerous. And uh, I, I think that we ought to um, negotiate this so that we have some sort of um, protection um, in case they decide that we are in violation. You, you are aware also that my president has that same restriction on along with... Basin this Park. very language? It's very similar, along with the Basin Park Reservation and approximately 20 other spring reservations in town. If we ever not use those for parks, it goes back to the U.S. government. On 30 days notice. I think it, I think that you have more time to uh, argue it, it, it in court. You're correct. It is not the 30 days, but this is um, the same I, restriction. I, I am restriction. not surprised by the reversionary clause. I'm surprised by how um, how easily they can take the property back. If we quit using it for parts. Well, no, not for parks, but for... That's the purpose of the No, it's more specific than parks. Well... It's, it's it can good. only be used for pedestrian walking, hiking, jogging, cycling, and other human-propelled uses. Open to the general public free of charge. Right. So it's not for parks. So if we start charging, they can take it back. Yes, they could. Uh, and, and if we start it using it for pic picnicking... For example, I think that would fall under walking pedestrian. I'm well. See, the problem is that the way they have written this, it is extremely easy for them to terminate based on their interpretation, without um, us having any um, legal uh, recourse. Okay. So I object to it. Uh, Ms. Snart. Uh, Mr. City Attorney. Since they donated this property to us, so to speak, and for a specific reason, do they not, would they, is it not automatic that they would have the right to take it away if we did not use it for the reason it was donated? Without these clauses it wouldn't be, but with these clauses it gives them the right to take it back if we decide to put a motocross Right. Like so they gave it to us for a specific reason. Therefore, we have to use it for a specific reason. That's our agreement, right? That's what they're offering you. Okay. If you accept. So we got a zillion acres of land for virtually nothing. And we're going to screw around with it and risk it? I don't think so. Ms. Green? Um, could I have Justin come up for just a moment? Are, are you happy with this? I mean, you're going to be kind of the one right, that's going to have to live I up think, to this contract. I think the mayor had the point. I mean, we live with this consistently. If we were to stop doing things at Leatherwood, it would go back to the federal government. I okay. mean, that's it's pretty. I don't believe it excludes us that we can't do anything else on the property. It says we have to maintain okay. these trails. Okay. So you, you've read through this and you are happy. I'm no expert. I mean, it seems but, that but that seems fairly standard. Again, you okay. know, like I said, but this you're, is. You're happy. You're accepting of it. I have no reason. I mean, we every, everything has been going very well, and these, you know, the, the, there's good faith in this, and uh, I mean, we are. The price is certainly right. I think. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think so. You know, um, you know, we certainly protect wow. ourselves. But again, I think to that end, there is a. I think that's perfectly within their wheelhouse, and it, to make sure their intent of donate their donation is followed, and that is that we maintain trails on this property. Um, and I mean, again, not a lawyer, but I, whatever contract is written, we can always there's you know, there's a judge and other people who get involved with those decisions as well on a 30-day uh, deal. But I, I, again, I, I, this feels it, it feels like the same way we operate Leatherwood. Okay, so you're, you're you're fine with it. Right. You're no problem. Yeah, the judge still okay. has to no. approve. Okay. But that's this is the trails are working out well, and I don't see any reason that we would never have them there. That's what I hear. Or, I hear great. Offer. Great so. things, and people are really happy. Yeah. If it's such good faith, why do they need this language? 
good God. Because it's a legal transfer of property that they have an intend intended purpose for. It's, it's, what? it's no different than the, the property that uh, Warren Kick gave the city for the fire department up there next to McDonald's. Uh, it had a reversionary clause and it still does. If, uh, if it quits being used as a firehouse, then it, then it goes back to his estate. I mean, that's just what happens. It's done all the time. I'm not objecting to the reversionary clause per se, but with the ease with which they can make the reversion, it's very I, Again, I will, I'm not going to pretend to have the, the knowledge to make that, that type of statement. So. All right, further discussion? We've got a motion and a second. Uh, I guess we have a roll call. Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? No. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Yes. 5 1. The resolution number will be 737. A resolution to <coughs> accept certain real property. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed that the Bentonville Bella Vista Trailblazers Association Incorporated, an Arkansas nonprofit cor non profit corporation, desires to transfer certain real property to the City of Eureka Springs, and whereas the City of Eureka Springs is willing to receive said property, and whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs understands the transfer is contemplated in the attached four deeds. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of Eureka Springs that this council approves the acceptance of the four parcels and authorizes the mayor to execute all necessary documents. Um, that brings us up to our next item which is item number five. Discussion of animal feces and bag dispensers around town. Ms. Green and Ms. Snyder. The motion to discuss? Um, so moved. Second. Yeah, Ms. Green? Um, we are a town that, it's a tourist town, and it's, it's a lovely town, and it's become an incredibly, we love animals, and it's very, very pet friendly. My pet friendly cottages just much more traffic through them than the ones that don't. So not having dispensers downtown, because people bring dogs, for them to use and to, to let, for lack of better words, poop all over, or maybe some of the people that Cameron has complained to me about might pick up their poop, but I think our, our visitors would, and I, I think it's a very friendly, welcoming thing to have some of these dispensers around by our trash cans. Um, we do have some, Ms. Green. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ms. Snyder. Um, okay, I lightly touched on this before when this first came up <sighs> several years ago when we were all on. We had approved dog poop dispensers in Basin Park and a few others. It didn't get passed, it never got finalized, mm -hmm. but I don't know why. Terry, Mayor, do you I guys got, remember? I got it right here. I mean, I know it didn't get passed, but I don't understand why. Because we had the dispensers, we had the bags, we had everything. What happened? The vote failed on the yeah, third reading. Yeah, but I mean, why? I, I don't remember. I don't either. I do know that the parks has some in their parks. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, is it in every park? Yeah, most, most springs. Okay. okay. So there are in the parks. Okay, could we put some downtown? I, I think it would be a friendly, welcoming thing. I think it's just a matter of putting it in the budget. Okay. And if that's what the council wants. Ms. Kendricks? Um, perhaps maybe we could start some sort of um, initiative 
where the merchants may um, take up this cause. Perhaps they could get together as an association and um, try to um, handle this because I think you know, we have a limited budget and we have to be very careful about where our money is spent and I hate to see it spent on something like this rather than on an improved sewer plant, for example. Ms. Green? Um, Christy, the, when we built the dog park, the little receptacles were like $240. All oh, the bags are, are pretty cheap. So it, I don't think it would be a huge if we even put four up. It, I, I realize that's $1,000 and that is a lot of money. But I just feel that it would be kind of welcoming and, and give people a chance because I hate when I'm walking in the morning and I ran out of a bag, you know, so that they can pick up their poop and, and have a way. I, I just think since we're such a tourist town and we should be clean, I think, you know, and, and I don't know that our merchants probably are going to be forthcoming with bags or if they're even going to want to do it. Or All right. What's the report to the council? What promotion? Where oh. around town did you want them? Just on, on some of the trash cans downtown. Oh, okay. Okay. I will move to make a motion that we put up about four new um, poop dispensers, for a better <laughs> word. I thought that's what the dogs were. Dispensers? Yeah. <laughs> bag, bag, bag dispensers for, for <laughs> you're right, bag dispensers for animal cleanup. I, <sighs> so you want the, basically your motion is for the city to purchase four uh, bag dispensers for around town. Is that yes, what I'm yes, hearing? Yes, yes. Right, did I hear a second? I'll second for discussion because I'm so confused. <laughs> then I can go. Okay, we already have these in the parks, like Basin Park and everything, right? I'm not sure about Basin Park. Yeah, yeah they mm -hmm. are in Basin Park, and I know they're in several okay. of the other parks. Yeah, oh. But there's no <coughs> down on North Main and South Main. Right. right. But where would you be putting? I mean, they're 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 next to the trash cans, Mickey. They're attached to the trash cans. Okay, I'm. Maybe I've been up here too long. There was never a pooping problem except in the parks. That's why I'm confused on his problem. Okay. That's, that's what I'm trying to find out. Where is this problem at? Main Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. North Main. North Main. South Main. Okay. This is South Main. Right. But it goes way down there. Okay. That's it. All right. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none. Uh, wait, wait, Oops, Mr. Thomas. I would just amend the motion to say a maximum of thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? <laughs> she said two fifty each. Yeah. Well, they last forever, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Is there a second on the amendment to the to the amendment? I'll second it. All right. Any discussion on the amendment? Who's going to provide the bags? Um, we will. He and said he's going to have to pay for the bags too. They're they're pretty, Justin. They're pretty inexpensive, aren't they? Are they more than two fifty? Right, we've got a motion and a okay. uh, second on the amendment for the discussion. All those in favor of the amendment, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes. All right. Uh, that brings it back to the original motion to, for the city's purchase. Uh, dispensers. Uh, Up Thomas. to four bag dispensers. I would move to defer this until we have specific site locations. To consider. 
I, I'll, I'll stuck at that because that's a smart move. All right. All those in favor of deferring this until we get specific sites, I'm saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, <coughs> bring this up to our next item. Uh, update on Robert Rule's order workshop. The motion discuss. So moved. Second. I'll second. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I want to say that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oops. Most of you remember that uh, City Council decided to hold the workshop after the November elections on Robert's Rules of Order. And I was charged with facilitating that, that workshop. So I just wanted to bring you up to date. Uh, we worked out the date to be the 4th of December, which is a Tuesday. And the time would be from 6 to 7.30 at the latest. The presenter would be Dr. Stacy McCall, who's the Assistant Director for Community and Economic Development with the University of Arkansas System Division Cooperative Extension Service. She oversees programs in leadership, local government, strategic planning, community and regional capacity building, and economic development. She also serves as the Director of the Public Policy Center, which provides Arkansans with timely, credible, and unbiased information and education about public issues. The only cost to the city would be the um, extension service that she works with publishes a pocket guide to parliamentary procedure that costs a dollar thirty each and she would want all of the participants in the workshop to have one of those. So, you know, it's a very minimal cost. Yes. What were the hours again? Uh, 6 to 7.30. Okay, thank you. On, on the 4th. 4th of December. Okay. Right. Ms. Kendricks? Um, Bob, I think this is great. Uh, my only comments are that um, it, it's, I certainly am not going to be around after the first of the year and some other people may not mm -hmm. and that doesn't allow the new people coming in from obtaining this information. Well the election would be in November and it, this is so, December. So, so you would invite not just the council but the new people? Right. Okay. The, the elected officials and all the seats on all the commissions totals up to 50. Uh, and then there's like Justin that is involved and so you know when we're talking about purchasing the the pocket guides I see it costing under a hundred dollars okay. so I thank you very much okay. you well, I guess what I want to do is I had told uh, Dr. McCullough that I would get back to her this week that council was agreeable to this. Okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. I, I, I think um, Bob would like me to make a motion to start this meeting. I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? Mm. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay. All right. And brings us up to our next item, uh, number seven, appropriation tax money to parks for 2018. Mr. Green, Ms. Mr. Thomas, and Ms. Green. Okay, so moved. <laughs> so I have a little. Give I a second. Have move to discuss. Move I have a second. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. I've got heard the motion. Did okay. Wait a second. That's what I heard. Who made the motion? Ms. Green. 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 Okay. A motion. And you are seconded? To discuss. To discuss. Oh, I'm seconding that. <laughs> All right. Mr. Thomas, you can start off. Okay. So I've made up a little flow chart that I'm going to pass out. But what I would like to do is to set your mood and project 20 years into the future when none of us are here, none of the parks commissioners are there, Justin Huss has moved on to much bigger and better things. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not talking about taking away anything from anybody or giving any more power to anybody. This is just strictly talking about procedure. I'd like you to have one. Cameron. Down that way. And be sure that Justin and Bertie get one. So 
discussion? There. Okay. <laughs> what one for Fergie, please? Okay. Ferguson? Yeah, you want your coffee? Mm -hmm. So the boxes across the top just represent all the different sources of money. Do you guys want one? All the different sources of money that comes into the city coffers. And, you know, there's like 70 or something different sources of revenue. But once the money comes into the city coffers, Coffers, the state statute says the council shall have the management and control of finances and all of the real and personal property belonging to the corporation or the city. And then what council does is we appropriate money for the operation of the city via the city budget. That gives the mayor the authorization to spend that money. The mayor hires the finance director, delegates management to him, and the finance director manages appropriated funds on a day-to-day -day basis and reports monthly to the city council. Now what happens with the parks tax funds, and there's two of them, you notice the money comes directly out of the city coffers and the finance director transfers it to the parks department. City Council has not appropriated it. City Council, as far as I know, never knows each month how much tax money was received and how much was sent out. And I think that we are just not doing due diligence by monitoring, not even monitoring the funds, just appropriating it as we are legally supposed to do. Uh, this is when you say we've got two different opinions, so I'd like to address that. The mayor, on March 15th, asked the administration, asked about the administration of the Leatherwood sales tax by city council at the request of Ms. Kendrick, and the response from the municipal league was the ordinance, Lake Leatherwood sales tax, does not specify who controls the funds, but presumptively only the city council can control the funds. And then goes on to say, ultimately, the policy, the policy decisions of funding or appropriating the Parks Commission is up to the city and can only be addressed by the city council. The mayor followed up again and asked, you know, the only question that we have is that the previous tax that was passed sometimes around 2007 goes to the city and then the city cuts the checks to parks. The city has never appropriated this tax to parks and we were thinking the same would be true of this new tax. The response from the municipal league lawyer, as I see it, doesn't address the appropriation. The lawyer simply says, your process of getting money into the general fund and then dispensing it to parks is an adequate process. The lawyer did not go back and say, oh, and by the way, you don't have to appropriate the funds. So I think we're missing a step. I think council has to appropriate funds to the parks department. The officer stated, otherwise I would advise the city to continue its current policy unless there's some reason to change it from which I've not been informed. Correct. Uh, the city council can change it, but I'm unsure as why it would do so. Uh, so also, as you noted, or we noted the last time in our audit, uh, that the state legislative audit found no uh, matters of discrepancy or issues with the Parks Department. Correct. Everything was going correctly uh, that they heard and that the city's compliance with Arkansas's laws concerning general and district uh, distribu distribution were in substantial compliance with Arkansas physical and financial 
laws, uh, with the exception of some in the district court and finance director. But the parks department, they found no problem with I don't think yeah, there's any fault with parks department. You know, I think it's city council failure. And I, I go back and draw an analogy to the Norris Street property. For five or six years, we didn't know we owned it, so we did nothing with it. Once it came to our attention that we owned it, we took responsibility for it. And I think the municipal league lawyer brought to our attention that we are responsible for appropriating funds to the Parks Commission. Ms. Kendricks? The law, I don't care what any opinion says, the law says upon each quarterly report being made to the mayor and city council by the commissioners, the city council may appropriate funds from the general uh, revenue fund of the city or from such other funds as the city may have available to make up any deficits or to provide such funds as may be necessary to carry on the operations of the recreational park. Therefore, this money is coming into the general revenue fund. Nothing in the, um, the um, whatever we voted on um, uh, provides otherwise. And therefore, the statute applies, and we need to be appropriating funds. I agree with Mr. Thomas. All right. Uh, Ms. Hart? Bob, what do you mean by appropriating? Be, how do you mean? I would have the lawyer, you know, beef it up with where no, for us and I where for our explanation. But my appropriation for 2018, for the fourth quarter of 2018, would be simply that the city council authorizes the finance director to transfer whatever monies are received under these two taxes to the parks department. Okay. We're authorizing it. We're appropriating Okay, so you don't mean as in, and if the city wants to buy new tires for their police cars, they can use that parks money? Oh, no, no. Okay. That's See, that was why we did it the way we did when this was first set up. So it could not be touched by anybody but parks. Well, that's in the... the uh, the ordinance. That's the why tax. we did it like that. Yeah. I'm not so sure, and, and, and again, you'd have to get a clarification on this, but that the, that the uh, passing, passing the tax itself is not in itself an appropriation. It should be. Mr. Reaver, you want to weigh in on that one? <laughs> that is my opinion that it is. That's yeah. been my opinion for some time. And I think that is what that second opinion basically is saying from the ministers. That what you're doing is fine. Don't change it. If you change it, it's simply going to be a ministerial step because as Mr. Thomas said, you can't reappropriate it to the police department. You can't turn it over to the building inspector. You can't buy poop bags for our new receptacles <laughs> if we get them. <laughs> they have to go to the parks because that's where the tax says they go. So it's been appropriated by virtue of the council's approval and the population's approval of those taxes. Ms. Kendrick? But it does allow us to look at the reports on a quarterly basis according to that statute to see if we think that it's being appropriately spent and not allow parks to be using it for things that we think are inappropriate. And now I admit that we have to use it within a certain parameter, but even within that parameter, the city council may feel that certain areas are more appropriate than others. And we are entitled and obligated under that statute to do the appropriation. You are entitled to see the books as to correcting what they wish to do with the money. They were set up as an independent commission and they are allowed to conduct business under their setup. If the attorney is allowed to just jump in and speak, then I right. believe I'm entitled to that. Good God Almighty. I think that, yes. I think 
they, we are, when we appropriate, we have power over where the money goes. We don't just have to give to them and however they want to. I agree it has to be used for certain purposes, and I'm never arguing that it does not need to be used for those purposes. But the city council is ignoring its obligations, absolutely ignoring our obligations and our rights. Mr. Thomas? I'm suggesting a mere technicality. I don't want to, I don't, I'm not suggesting that we control how Park spends their money any more than we're, we do now, and we don't do it at all now. I just feel like we are obligated because this money comes into the city coffers that we are responsible for it. We would not let the finance director give money out to any other organization without somebody approving it. And I don't think the voters approving the tax is the same as council appropriating the funds. The sales, oh, we have general sales taxes that come into the, to the uh, city coffers, but that money is managed by the city council. We appropriate it in this, in when we do the budget. We have certain limitations on some of that sales tax money too. Right. That Streets and roads, right. But even though, even though there's, even though it's encumbered for a certain, uh, for a certain department or certain usage, we still appropriate it. Ms. Snyder? We had the same argument many months ago when the council approved putting on a ballot the question of an air specific tax to be used by and for parks only and the voters of the city voted to approve that and more than once that's the appropriation number one number two that specific tax is very clear it is for the use of and by parks only we are not the parks specialists the department head of parks in this case <coughs> Justin any of his assistants or co-workers or anybody else involved in the office with him are the experts they are the ones who say what they do and do not do with the money that the people have entrusted to them and their smart behavior ergo we keep our dirty little meat hooks off of their money because they know what it's for we uh, do not order. i'm done good I've been here before okay. uh, yes, sir. i do not think that miss schneider understands at all what i'm suggesting here that's that's i have no concerns about running out to parks and seeing if Justin's buying the kind of coffee that I want them to buy. That's, That's ridiculous. But this has nothing to do with the operation of parks. It has to do with the appropriation of money. Ms. Green? We have a commissioner and the director here. I'd like them to weigh in on it. If did, did two I commissioners, think, I think two commissioners. Oh. No, you don't want to. Okay. This is a council. Okay. Issue. Okay. I do have one other question. I don't always understand stuff, so bear with me, Tim. Because they are autonomous, which we had a big discussion over that. Is that the reason the money comes into the city? It goes to them without us having any oversight on it? It is a tax that was passed by the populace, or two taxes that were passed by the populace, that are specifically for use, one at Leatherwood primarily, and the other for parks in more general, but but both were dictated to be spent on those purposes. To have the city council appropriate the money to something else would open the city to a lawsuit by the taxpayers for misappropriation of money. Okay, well that, 
Um, you probably didn't understand me. What, what I'm asking is the money comes in from the tax, the, the vote, the people spoke. Because they are autonomous, it just goes to the city and then it goes to them. We, we have no control as the council or the mayor over, over it in any way or form. Well, if I understood Councilman Kendrick a moment ago, she is saying, well, if they decide to buy new boats for Lake Leatherwood, and we as council, not me, but the body, does object to that, that you could potentially say no, that money should go for other purposes within the park. If that is what's being said, I don't see the purpose in having a parks commission because the parks commission is supposed to be autonomous okay. and be able to spend its money as it sees fit. That's why they have a commission is to run the park and if council is going to substitute its own desires or its own beliefs for that of the commission, you might as well dissolve the commission and run everything through here. But that's going to be very cumbersome if you do that to all the commissions in town. Mr. Kendricks? The city attorney is uh, talking about how he thinks the Parks Commission ought to operate, whereas the law states that yes, it is an independent commission, and it, whatever it earns from its revenues is its own money, and the city council cannot touch that money. However, if they need any other money from the city coffers, then it has to come, it has to be appropriated by city council and I'm so? not suggesting that city council can appropriate appropriate the money for any purpose other than the purposes for which it was dedicated but nowhere in that in those ballots did it state that it was going directly to parks it never said that it simply said what the use of the money was supposed to be and the statute clearly says that quarterly we're supposed to receive reports and appropriate what other money we want to parks. If I may. The passage you read a minute ago in the state statute says other monies. Other monies is monies this council might wish to give from the general fund. You take in a sales tax which is not dedicated to the parks. And if you want to dedicate or give part of that to the parks for additional funds, yes, you have the control over those funds. You don't have to give them additional funds if you don't wish to. But you can't take away their funds. Um, we don't have a motion on the floor, do we? Yeah. Okay. Then, then I would suggest that somebody make one and, and let's, let's make a vote. I think everyone's made their minds up on how they want to behave with this and what their choice is going to be. So let's move forward, please. All right. Uh, Mr. Thomas, do you want to have a motion you want to make? I would like to think for a few minutes. I have a motion, yes, but I don't think this council understands at all what I'm talking about. Five or six of them. So I think it's a waste of time almost, but I'm going to make the motion. I'm going to make the motion. Could I ask the attorney a question first? Sure. Could we appropriate funds by a motion or does it have to be a resolution? It would, you can make an oral resolution, but it would be better if it was transmitted on paper. Okay. That way there's less con possibility of confusion. Then my motion is that someone prepares a resolution that appropriates all monies received under the two tax ordinances be transferred to parks for the fourth quarter of 28. All right, get a second. Second. Discussion? Ms. Snyder? So I'm still confused. 
Bob, are you saying you merely want to add an extra step between the money coming in from taxes and an extra step going out to parks and basically saying every fourth quarter you want Justin in here, I mean every four months, you want Justin in here to give a report on how much money came in? He does that anyway. Well, that's what I thought. But I mean, but is that what you're saying? My say, my, what I'm saying is we should have been doing this all along. Now we will do it for the fourth quarter. In January, we could do it for a whole year. But that's what I'm asking. What you're saying is it's merely a matter of the 10000 comes in for parks tax. They automatically send it to parks. Are you saying you want us to know that 10000 came in? I'm saying in? that we have to authorize that. We have to appropriate. Now, would we have to authorize every single month or once a year? Or? I, think we could, I think we can do it for the fourth quarter now. I think in 2018 we could do it for the whole year. So we could say in January, we could say we are approving whatever for this to go through automatically. Yes. So it's not, it's just a verbal recognition that we know the tax money is coming in and that's being shipped out to parks. And that that's we it. are managing, it's, a, it's, a, it's our job we're, to manage that money. And we're managing it, but... But that's what I'm saying. So what you're saying is all we have to do is make one verbal claim that we approve parks tax money to go to parks. Correct. Okay. Ms. Kendrick. This statute requires that we appropriate quarterly. Do you mean a report or saying it quarterly? Yes, every quarter is quarterly. Are you saying we have to say this every quarter? Yes. Okay. Instead of once a year. That's what Ms. Kendricks is Instead saying. of once a year. All right. Yes. We got, okay. we got a motion. Thank Did you make a motion? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. And we got a second, Ms. Kendricks. Yes. Any further discussion? Let's have a roll call. Read the question first, please. You mean the motion? I mean the motion, yes. The motion is that we make a quarterly, make a resolution allocating the... Pardon me. No, that's not what he said. All right. <laughs> Bob, will you say it again? I wrote down most of what you said, but I want it to be right. That we have someone prepare a resolution authorizing the transfer of funds from the general fund to Parks Commission in an amount equal to the money that is received under the two tax ordinances. Are you good with that is yeah. for a second? Okay. Everybody understand the question, the motion? Okay. Mr. McClung. No. Ms. Kendrick. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Schneider. Come back to me, please. Ms. Green. <laughs> Can you come back to me? <laughs> um. We're going to come back to you next week yeah, or yeah. what? Oh, that works for me. I'm going to say no. <laughs> Mr. Buford? Uh, no. Ms. Schneider? No. 4-2? Correct. No, 2-4 actually. 2-4. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, I guess it's uh, item number 8, the second quarter financial reports. That's Lonnie wants you. Go with me. All righty. As required by state statute, this is uh, your opportunity to drill down into details a bit. So we have five components two which have been coming lately with the uh, monthly review, debt service and bank balances, the receipts, the check register and payroll and these live in the clerk treasurer's office and of course you're welcome to come and 
look at the details. All right, thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, that uh, brings us to uh, ordinance number 2272. Motion to discuss. Second. Second. <coughs> Comments, Mr. McClellan? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the rules and read ordinance number 2272 for its third and final reading for passage. Second. By title only. By title only. Second. Discussion? Okay. Is that a roll call? It is. Okay, so this will be... Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ordinance number 2272 is amended 72318, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding planned unit development. Mr. McClung? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 2272 on its third and final reading. Second. Discussion? I think this is a Okay. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. 6 0. That All right, that uh, brings us to uh, Larry Burkett damage claims. Is Larry in the room? Mr. Burkett? Ms. Green? Um, last week we kind of had a brouhaha because I recanted my vote and the reason for it was I wanted this gentleman to show up so he hasn't so. Uh, Ms. Snyder? Um, I make a motion that since he hasn't bothered to show up for two meetings it's not that important and we drop the issue and go to tort immunity I'll second that Discussion? All in favor, sing five to sing aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, that brings us up to the final update on the auditorium remodel. Any motion to discuss? So moved. Second. Uh, after our, our last uh, comment, or last uh, meeting, I uh, notified the council that we ran into a little uh, unexpected issue with the uh, floor and everything. Since then, our structural engineer has came up with a creative solution cool. that we think we can go back to our original elevator system uh, without too much cost. Uh, so we are now um, looking at actually analyzing, and I'm trying to uh, direct the architect to come up with two proposals so I can present to the council uh, the various costs of going in with uh, our original system which would allow us a 1500 pound capacity uh, and then we're also checking to see what a, a smaller elevator system but it would still be uh, roughly uh, I think five by five uh, to, or seven by five to allow the wheelchair access uh, and it wouldn't be quite as heavy but it might be about a thousand pound capacity uh, so we're looking into that I'm hoping uh, and I've been told that by next council meeting we should have some cost numbers for the council and some uh, schemes to look at. So that's kind of where we are. It's just taking a while, but we're keeping finding some issues and some problems, but we're coming up with uh, finding out some other solutions. Uh, and I'm actually kind of excited to see that structural engineer, the local engineer, came up with a the concept of uh, a method where we can go back with our original elevator system, but, which is a more expensive elevator, but it's going to give us everything that's more of a, a system that the council would like and the city would like. So that's kind of the update on that. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Questions? Mayor. No, thank you for all your work. All right. Uh, agenda setting. Anyone? All right, hearing none, I'm going to, how about city council comments, Mr. McClellan? Uh, <coughs> just checking in on the uh, appraisal on North Street. 
Uh, I am supposed to be getting something here real quick. So I should be able to have it. So an appraiser day. appraiser has been hired. Oh, appraiser's been hired and just gone up there and looked at okay. it. And I should be getting the report. Excellent. Uh, and distribute it back to the council. Okay. Ms. Kennedy? No comments. Mr. Thomas? No comments. Ms. Snyder? Um, I just want to remind everybody who is running for office at the Legion, the American Legion here in Eureka, well, slash holiday, whatever. They are um, hosting a Meet the Candidates September 20th here at the auditorium, which is a Thursday at 7 p.m. Make sure you contact me or Peggy, whomever, um, so that you can come. This is for all state, federal, and local. Ms. Peggy. Um, contact me and I'll get a hold of Peggy. September, did you say? <laughs> September 20th, 7 p.m. here at the auditorium. Um, there's that. And I just, it's been a hard day. It's been a hard several days. So I apologize if I seem to have gotten out of line, but I'm just so sick and tired of the garbage that goes on. We're supposed to be working together for our community, not against each other or against our community. And, you know, when you try to do something to avoid the last minute rush of, oh, we don't have that law or we need to fix that law or why didn't we fix the law? We've been doing that for eons. I thought we'd agreed not to. So that being said, have fun when things start happening. It's going to be your own fault. Aside from that, I was going to say happy birthday to my buddy John McCain. Unfortunately, now it's remember him. Yeah. That's it. Ms. Green? Nothing. Uh, I want to apologize for missing the budget meeting. I just not noticed it on my agenda, and I apologize for not being here. We know now to uh, take your reminder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank all the citizens uh, who's contacted me about the actual crime rate in your experience. Uh, I appreciate your concern. Uh, about some incorrect national information that was being passed out is factual. Uh, and when it comes to your Springs actual crime statistics, uh, that's the reason we had Chief Acord here today. I think a lot of us pride ourselves on your Springs and our uh, low crime and, and the uh, safety of our city that we have. Uh, and how everybody is uh, it's one of the nice advantages of still living here. Uh, unfortunately, we still have. Uh, We've got to, you know, keep, we can't leave our keys in the car anymore. And it wouldn't hurt if you got valuables in there to lock your cars. Because uh, things do happen, like it used to be. Uh, but still, I appreciate everybody who uh, contacted me regarding that. Uh, as far as events coming up on the uh, 29th through uh, September the 1st, we've got the banjo rally. Day and evenings uh, playing in all around town and up in the end of the Ozarks and various other town locations. On September the 1st, uh, Saturday, I guess, drumming in the park from 6 to 8 in the Basin Park. And then on the 9th, uh, September the 7th through the 9th, we'll have the 48th Annual Automobile Festival, Antique Car Show, all day. And they're going to be up at the Passion Play this year. And then on the 8th, we'll have the Antique Car Parade starting at 4 p.m. Uh, it will be up through the starting the Passion Play and then going around the Upper Loop and around Spring Street and down to Main Street. And then on the 8th, immediately following the Antique Car Parade on Spring Street, we'll have the, our annual Antique, <laughs> uh, antique our annual Great Bank Robbery. And then also that evening from 6 to 9, we'll have the Gallery Stroke, various downtown galleries. So, if nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so moved. Thank you all.